Piers Corbyn from weatheraction.com, long range weather and climate forecasters. And today is Friday, June the 1st, and we're going to talk about what happened in May around Britain, Europe and the world. We'll talk about the developing little ice age type phenomena which have been seen uh, as we approach a new little ice age in the world. And thirdly, we'll talk about our weather action, solar lunar action technique, which number eight, which has been devised to deal with a changing world circulation situation. And we'll discuss what this means for the future of meteorology. May 2012, around the world, was a very important weather month. Uh, there were a lot of extreme events and uh, rapid changes in circulation. In terms of our forecast, uh, what we predicted out of America went, went very well. Um, in terms of Europe, um, it also went very well, but there was a change after the third week, in the fourth week. Uh, there were big, there was big changes which we'll discuss. But the most important thing to notice was we said there would be a uh, general northerly wind in the first three weeks. Well, we said it would carry on, but a general northerly wind and it will turn around and it will be uh, very warm in Eastern Europe, a bit like it had been in April. And that was confirmed absolutely for the first three weeks of May. Now our long range forecast for May for Britain and Ireland said it would be uh, very cold, uh, even uh, coldest or near coldest for a hundred years in eastern parts um, and, and maybe central parts, central Britain. Um, and there would be a big run of northerly winds and there would be snow at times. Now all of these key features were confirmed. And furthermore, our explicit statement that spring would be delayed and that our forecast had serious implications for agriculture was confirmed. Uh, now what happened after the third week was different, but for anyone involved in growing, what we said was absolutely of crucial importance. Long range attempts at forecasting who come up with, oh, well, it's maybe going to be a bit average, which is what they would say, uh, is actually of no use to people who actually have to deal with the weather in practical terms. So, um, we got six of our weather periods out of eight correct, which is our normal sort of score anyway, and the most important feature. The first row of six, a very cold situation, was confirmed. Then after this three weeks of tremendous cold, we had a sudden hit of a late May heat wave, which we didn't expect, and in fact neither did any, even short range meteorologists, see it coming until about four days ahead. So there's something very important about that event and about its timing. But before we get on to that, what to notice is, during May, we had very low temperatures, including record cold uh, temperatures in, in Scotland, and those turned around to record high temperatures in Scotland in, in, during the last week. Um, and I think what we can conclude from all of this is that our general warning issued uh, a year ago that there would be more extreme weather events due to re uh, large changes in the jet stream, and this would get even worse possibly this year. That has been confirmed. And this extreme heat following extreme cold is an example of the sort of contrasting weather situations we're going to get as we approach the new little ice age. Uh, so we see more of this type of thing due to very big swings north and south of the Northern Hemisphere jet stream. 
the dramatic switch from very cold weather in Britain and West Europe, which we predicted, to the very warm uh, events took place exactly at the same time as our uh, top level uh, red warning period, which we call an R5 period, which was the uh, around the 23rd to 25th of May. And the change began on the 22nd and it got very warm by the 25th. And we predicted for that period for around the world and on the sun there would be special events. Um, uh, there was also a, uh, a annular solar eclipse. Uh, there were many major storms around the world. There were serious hailstorms with large hail. There were quite a number of tornado uh, events, earthquake events, um, uh, and a exacerbation of tropical storm developments, which we did explicitly predict. Um, and what this led to in terms of world circulation, apart from what was happening in the jet stream from the sun, was that the uh, instead of just going to the south, where the gen well, the general track of lows was uh, south and giving the north wind here, so there's a kind of blocking to the west of British Isles. What happened was that suddenly flipped and we had a high pressure develop over Scandinavia and uh, well, the jet stream went up to the north uh, essentially giving very warm air in Britain and indeed very warm air coming from the east. It was quite a sort of complicated change but it happened very rapidly and dramatically. Meteorologists and politicians are going to have to get to grips with what the impending New Little Ice Age means and we're on the foothills of approach to this now. Uh, last time over these periods in Britain um, they were all associated with low solar activity which is something we are in now and we understand from our own work that this will continue. And there are basically seven key points to understand about um, the new Little Ice Age and previous Little Ice Ages. The sun is generally quieter and magnetically more confused and the solar wind, that's the rush of particles that come from the sun at a million miles an hour, is slower, generally. The jet stream, which roughly speaking describes the approximate path of low pressure systems around the northern hemisphere, that will have very wide amplitude fluctuations. And also the corresponding jet stream in the southern hemisphere also has very wide fluctuations. And the one in the northern hemisphere on average goes further south and the one in the southern hemisphere on average goes further north. Now, of course, straight away that means from our magnetic understanding of it all that the Little Ice Age in the past happened in the northern and southern hemispheres simultaneously. And they're mainly temperate region phenomena and would affect the whole of the northern hemisphere uh, temperate region. That follows from our theory and that is now known to have been the case. Although years ago people didn't know if it was in fact the case. They thought it might have just been Europe or whatever it was called. The uh, fourth thing is there will be very rapid changes in weather, particularly, as I said, in the temperate zones. And it doesn't mean it's cold all the time, but it's in a period of general cooling. The fifth thing would be rapid changes in standard parameters, and we've noticed that recently. That is the thing they call the North Atlantic Oscillation, which describes um, flow really across the Atlantic. That has been changing rapidly. The Arctic Oscillation, a similar sort of thing, has been changing rapidly. Um, the colder air in the uh, middle atmosphere also means that you're going to get much more extreme hailstorms and hail events. And in the little ice age there were 
very, very major hailstorms. And uh, in the last month, there's been very major hailstorms. In France, whole areas of, of crops were destroyed by hail <coughs> only in the last few weeks. Um, there'll also be an increase in major earthquakes and volcanism. The reason for this is, is uh, complicated and we could discuss another time, but they're part of little ice age events. And it's not the case that the volcanism was causing the cooling. It's that the volcanism and the cooling have common cause. And that, of course, leads people to think that volcanoes are actually more important than they are for cooling. It's just they happen, these things happen together. Now, while this is going on, of course, we'll see more and more serious limitations of standard meteorology. People noticed during May the uh, Met Office and others around the world just could not see what was going on. Our forecast was being carried out, that's what we said, for 21 days and they were jumping around almost daily on what was going to happen in the next few days. Um, and then it was a big change, but we are now getting to grips with why the change happened. Um, but I think the important thing to understand is that as we're in a little ice age, standard meteorology will carry on making these mistakes. And it means that standard meteorology is doomed to carry on making big fail mistakes for the next 20 years. And no amount of computing power will rectify their problem. In fact, I think we should oppose absolutely attempts by the Met Office to spend millions of pounds more of taxpayers' money on getting the wrong answer quicker. It's a waste of money and their application for more computer power should be terminated. What we need to have is more physics applied to meteorology. Okay, we've now developed the new solar lunar action technique number eight, which we believe will enable us to spot these times when we're going to have especially dramatic switches in the jet stream. Um, we're quite good at saying when they're going to be cold, but we think now we can also uh, show or when we're going to have switches, especially in Europe, to warmer weather. But bear in mind that what's happening is often American weather stays as, as predicted without these hiccups and the jet stream around the world flips suddenly, even though America can stay the same. And that's probably because the magnetic north pole is nearest the US of A. Um, and what uh, seems to be the case, and we've noticed this before, is that when we have our top level solar weather hits, that is when the jet stream shifts. And we're now saying if these are of a certain type, then we will get the warming type events uh, in, in, in Britain uh, and therefore predict them. And this means we have to have more data to look back in the past, more options to look at, and we have, have got those. And we also have to have rules which tell us when it's likely to happen. We've worked some out and they have been applied to the June 2012 forecast. There are two weather periods in that which are big changes from what they were in the 45 day ahead forecast. So those of you that have got that forecast, uh, We'll be quite interested in watching those events. Thank you.